Last time we looked at getting your computer recording for the first time. We looked at what we need to record and tips on what to watch out for when recording. This time, we're going one step further to take a look at audio interfaces, what they are, how to work with them, and which one may be best for you. So a device like this is called an audio interface. An audio interface is the bridge between the sound in the real world and recording it on the computer. There are a million models out there, but there are a lot of attributes common to all of them. As an exercise, I would like you to have a look at the digital audio interfaces on the Adorama site. I want you to read some of the descriptions and see can you find common phrases or terms that are used, no matter what the brand or make. Let me explain a few of the terms. Firstly, you'll see 2x2 or 4x2. This describes how many inputs and outputs the machine has. In the case of 2x2, then you have two inputs and two outputs. 4x2 means four inputs and two outputs. You'll have seen each machine showing a kilohertz number and a bit rate, like 48K and 24-bit, or 192 and 32-bit. This indicates the quality of the recording that the interface is capable of. So if you consider that HDTV plays a 48K 24-bit, you'll not be recording some major orchestra in some incredible venue from the get-go. So some interface that records up to 96 at 24-bit is more than adequate for your needs. The next thing you'll notice about all these machines is the connectors. The different interfaces have a different amount of connectors depending on the inputs and the outputs, but generally, all of them have the same types. Firstly, there's the round looking connector with a hole in the middle. This is called a combo input that allows you to connect either a microphone or an instrument. Microphone connectors are generally a connector called an XLR. You have a male connector that'll connect into the interface and a female XLR that'll connect into the mic itself. The hole in the middle of the combo is for inserting a quarter inch jack plug, which you'll find on the guitar lead. The headphone socket is also a quarter inch jack and the main outs are quarter inch jack. The main outs are the master outputs to a set of speakers. On some interfaces, you may also notice another round connector with six little holes. Don't worry about that right now. It's a MIDI connector, but we won't be looking at MIDI until later episodes. Each of the combo inputs are connected to a thing called a mic pre or a preamp. A pre is controlled by the knob assigned to it. So if you want to boost the signal of the mic or instrument plugged into input, say, input one, then you turn up the number one knob until you have a nice level coming onto your recording. Have a look at the previous episode where we went through setting your recording levels. One very important thing to watch out for when plugging in microphones is how they might need power. We'll go through mics in some other episodes, but suffice to say, some mics need power to work. You'll see phantom power mentioned in the interface descriptions. Phantom power is a little bit of power sent down the mic cable to power the microphone. If you find that your mic is not working, it may need phantom power. Turn on the phantom power switch on the interface. The other knobs will be your headphone volume and the volume of the main output. One very important thing to look out for is called latency. Latency is the amount of time it takes for a signal to come from your mic or your instrument through the interface into the computer and back out to your headphones or speakers. With a lot of latency, there's a long delay between what you're playing and what you're hearing back from the system. It can be really difficult to maintain musical timing when you're recording yourself because you're hearing yourself playing back in your headphones up to half a second later. It can be really difficult to maintain musical timing when you're recording yourself because you're hearing yourself playing back in your headphones up to half a second later. There'll be a monitor knob or direct monitoring button on the interface. That allows you to reduce the latency by reducing one of the signals that you're listening to, either what you're playing or what the computer is playing out. It'll take a bit of playing around with until you find the balance or workflow that suits you. You'll also see a USB connector to your computer, though it could be any computer connector from Firewire to Thunderbolt. When you connect your interface to your computer, go to your system settings and make sure the computer is seeing your interface. You'll see it listed under sound output and input options. 
the interface should be seen pretty much immediately. If there are any drivers that come with the interface, do install them, as they may give you extra functionality. Last time I suggest you to download and install Audacity, a free audio software program. I gave you a basic oversight of what it does and asked you to go and read the manual and play with it to learn what it can do. You may need to tell Audacity what audio hardware it should be using, the computer's built-in audio or your audio interface. To select the interface input, select it with the drop-down menu at the top left, beside the little microphone icon. Next to it, you can select the audio output of the program by selecting your interface in the drop-down menu beside the little speaker icon. When selected, you're ready to go. This is how you tell audio software how to use your hardware, even the professional ones. Though the options may be a little different and may be hidden elsewhere in the program's preferences. Plug in an instrument or a microphone and try and record something by hitting the big red button in the top left hand side. Hit the space bar to stop the recording. Now play back your recording by hitting the space bar again. You should now be hearing what you just recorded through your headphones or your speakers. Don't forget to turn up the volume on your headphones to a comfortable level. A couple of things to look out for if you're buying a new interface. A lot of interfaces connect up to iPads or iPhones via camera adapter. It might be an option for the future. Finally, there are a lot of companies offering free software with their products. Light versions are real professional software. Have a look at all the options before you buy anything. Next time, we'll look a little deeper into your new audio software and get you ready to move into using the big boy toys. I'm Keith Alexander and you've been watching one of our Back to Basic specials on Anorama TV. We want your input. What subjects would you like me to cover in future episodes? Are there specific teachings or gear you'd like me to cover? Or if you have any problems you want to just run by me, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos and check out the Adorama Learning Center for more great articles and tips on all things audio and video.